Namaskar. So <clears throat> uh, today I'm going to discuss about uh, the some foundations for singing lyrical songs in in um, in the Indian tradition. So <clears throat> first, the, th the first thing to understand is, um, of course, why we should sing the songs and what is the purpose? What is the science behind singing those spiritual songs? I touched, I was discussing about that also in my first talk where I was more talking about um, the devotional or like how we are making the connection to our inner love and to that supreme love but uh, there is more to it um, than that only so <clears throat> uh, the the spiritual songs you see our mental flow is normally not straight it's quite uneven and so we need to establish a parallelism with the cosmic flow in order to do good meditation and so the uh, the meditation is a process where we are straightening our mental waves and making our mental waves more straight now the songs they produce a certain vibrational wave and uh, our mind has a certain vibrational wave and uh, <clears throat> today i will like, explain how those vibrational waves can uh, bring about spiritual progress so there's four things that we'll mainly talk about so bhava bhasha shur and chant or bhava means ideation uh, chanda means uh, the rhythm shur is melody and uh, bhasha is the language so i will start with the uh, bhava or the ideation of the song so um just one second <coughs> So uh, on the ideation of the song, um, when we are singing the song, the song has a certain frequency. And uh, we are setting in motion uh, like, a, like a wave, like a spiritual wave when we are singing the song. And so that spiritual wave of the song helps to bring us closer to that um, the wave of the supreme consciousness which is infinitely tranquil so our mental waves are more um, you know they may or may not be that tranquil when we sit for meditation and that's why it's good to prepare the main mind by making the mind making the waves more tranquil so one of the waves one of the ways to do that is to do use the mantra so I'm going to just sing for one minute uh, on, you know, for the Bhavanam Kevalam mantra. Bhavanam Kevalam Bhavanam Kevalam Bhavanam Kevalam Baba namo kivana Baba nam 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 Baba nam ki vana Baba nam ki vana Baba nam ki 
So this was the Baba Nam Kevala Mantra. It means love is all there is, or more specifically, only the name of that Supreme Loving Consciousness, or the Supreme Father. So <clears throat> there's a subtle science um, which is called Shravan, Manan, and Nidhi Vihasa. I will not go too deep into that topic, because that topic is a whole lecture in itself. But uh, Shravan means to hear the name of the Lord. Manan means to contemplate on the divine being or the supreme consciousness. And Nididyashan means to merge yourself into that uh, cosmic consciousness. So this is extremely helpful and this is the reason, this is the philosophical reason why we are singing Kirtan, means Bhavanam Kevalam, and uh, uh, other devotional songs. So broadly, we can divide spiritual music into two categories. Uh, one category would be the Kirtan or the mantra music music which contains the mantras and the other category would be the bhajan so bhajan it means all kind of lyrical songs and um, so those songs they will have some good meaning which helps to elevate the mind now uh, you all of you you can compose some beautiful songs yourself and uh, and those songs uh, can be sung and they can be helpful for your spiritual progress. And um, um, there are also many songs in the spiritual literature. So the songs that I'll be singing today belong to uh, a song cycle uh, called Tabhat Sangita. So it's a beautiful songs uh, that all have very deep spiritual meaning and uh, uh, they are composed by my guru and that's why I, I love to sing those songs. Now, <clears throat> so the songs, they create uh, a wave which helps to balance our mental waves and make them more straight and more aligned with the infinitely peaceful mental waves or cosmic waves of the cosmic consciousness. Now, <clears throat> so today I'll be talking about bhav, bhasha, shur, and chan. So let's start with the bhav. So bhava, um, I'll first just read for you the definition of bhava. So there's a uh, there's a slogan which describes it, uh, which is Shuddha Sattva Vishesha Tad Prema Suryangshu Samya Bhag Ruchi Pishchitta Masrinyao Tridasya Bhava Uchode. Or in English, Bhava is the subtlest parallelism between human existence and the spiritual flow. 
when that certain parallelism is established in a person, one may say that he or she is in a stance of bhav. So, <clears throat> so we are talking about parallelism. So the cosmic consciousness is infinitely tranquil, infinitely peaceful. And then we are bringing our mental wave in alignment or parallelism slowly, slowly with that cosmic consciousness. And uh, <clears throat> we are trying to make our mental waves more straight. Now, many of you are familiar with the Tama, Raja and Sattva force. And those are also related to the three uh, chambers of our mind, which are the Chitta, Ahang and Mahat. So Chitta is the objective mind, Ahang is the ego, and Mahat is our existential I. So the songs, they help us to bring our mind in close, close proximity with the Supreme Consciousness. And so they are just touching that border where the mental waves are becoming straight. And the Sattva Guna is, is bringing the mind very fast towards the Supreme Consciousness. So <clears throat> now in order to do that, of course, the song needs to have a good meaning. So the meaning of the song is important. The lyrics of the songs are important and the language of the song is important. It all correlates. A beautiful language will convey a beautiful meaning. So today I will sing one song which has a beautiful way of expressing exactly the relationship between bhav, bhasha and chant and shri. So I don't know it completely by heart, so I Oh, 
भाषा छे So this song is number 1929 and um, the meaning is the feelings search for language and language searches for melodies towards a world beyond thought the feelings rush around your ankle pads the melodies are dancing you came in the light and rhythm of love with a thinking you intoxicated my bewildered heart what for you descended i am now able to realize that you dance on without pause ever removing all afflictions so <clears throat> so the feelings they search for language and then the language will find the words and then the words will express you know the language now this is also related to another topic which i would um i hope to give another talk on that sometimes which is a very deep uh, deep subject which is how the language is created in our beings so according to the very subtle yogic science um all sound starts from like um from the from the basic plexus from the mulatar chakra and it, it it moves up moves up and and there are different energies that assist the language to come through all the chakras until it reaches to the vishuddha chakra and then in the vishuddha chakra it it becomes the language and so in the vishuddha chakra it will either become you know uh, like a hand gesture or a body language uh, and you know your mental your facial expressions or it will become the the spoken language and so it is only at at the vishuddha chakra that you are separating the different languages like bengali english sanskrit icelandic german etc all of that is separated here in the vishuddha chakra and uh, <clears throat> until then it is more in a unexpressed state you're kind of feeling your words and you are not having the language for it yet until it reaches to here. So now uh, the songs, to in, in order for the songs to touch the mind, the imagery of the songs needs to be beautiful. The songs that need to create some beautiful images in the mind of the person. So... <clears throat> um, I will sing one song, another song, <laughs> which has beautiful imagery. And I do believe I sang it last time or maybe uh, the first time. And I think it's no harm because it is really a beautiful song. Uh, so that song is called Eki Modroda Pavani, Eki Madokota Monon. And uh, <clears throat> I recorded a small video with it where I explain more the deeper meaning of that song. So in this song, I maybe read first the meaning. So the number is 1486. What a sweetness in the breeze. What is this ecstasy in the contemplation? How the birds sing myriad melodies. You fill the creation with colors, forms, and songs. You have scattered everywhere your magic, 
divine love. On tune after tune, you float along to your own rhythm and song. Come into my heart with your sweet smile, with your enchanting flute resounding. Why hide in my mind, dear Lord? Please appear in song and dance before me. So the Bengali goes like, Eki Modrada Bhavani, Eki Madhukada Monani, Eki Shuri Shuri Bhagigai, Eki Bhalo Bhasha Bhavani. So it's a beautiful Bengali language. So let me sing that song. So this this will be an example of beautiful imagery. So it's uh, like your mind, uh, the bhava of this song is that, you know, you are feeling that supreme consciousness in a natural environment, in the birds singing, in the sun coming up, and uh, um, in the, you know, all the different beautiful forms are going, are in all around the, you know, all around the universe. All these beautiful forms are there. And the Supreme Consciousness is manifested in all these beautiful forms. So the Tantric philosophy is very positive. It's seeing the Supreme consci Consciousness manifested in everything around you. And so it's, it's seeing that divinity within the form. And then the, the last part of the song is saying, come into my heart with your sweet smile. So there he's talking about the Guru. He's, he's requesting the Guru to come into the mind of the, of the devotee and, you know, with smiling and, 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 and playing the flute. So the flute is, you know, is the expression of when the Kundalini is rising up here from, um, from Anahata to Vishuddha Chakra. And, uh, and it's also, it's Krishna's flute. So the flute, uh, that flute sound of Krishna, Krishna means consciousness. The, the flute sound of the uh, consciousness is within yourself. And so it's requesting the Lord or the Supreme Consciousness to, to allow the, the devotee to hear that divine sound of the flute. So, you know, it's beautiful imagery. And uh, uh, so it's bringing your mind into those uh, beautiful idea. It's a, it's a beautiful mental space that is created. Eki modu rata pavani Eki madu kata monani Eki modu rata pavani Eki madu kata monani Eki shuri shuri Eki shuri shuri Tani, 
jeri chandi ja eki ma So now regarding the ideation, so it's also important that um, we, we should be able to really take the ideation of the song when we are singing it. So now all of these songs are actually in the Bengali language. So that's a little bit of a threshold, a learning threshold for many people. And uh, myself also, um, in the beginning, you see the first songs that I heard, I just heard a CD uh, called Chunali Bor. And I heard that CD and I felt like, wow, that music is so touching. It's so beautiful. I didn't know anything what they were saying or I didn't know the Indian style of music. I was educated in Western style of music and I didn't know anything about Indian music. But it just sounded so soothing and so beautiful. And I got attracted to it and started to learn it. So after I left Iceland, um, I didn't have so much time to play the piano anymore, but I had much more time to sing those songs. And that time I started to study the Bengali language. And so what I found was that um, it was more very helpful for me to, to note the songs in the Bengali script. So, um, you know, here's my notebook. So like, uh, I, I note the songs in the Bengali script and that's how I learn them because I just, um, I've already studied, I can read and write Bengali and, um, you know, it's easier for me. Now, most people, they will write it in the English and that's perfectly fine. And, uh, but it's important. So now I'm kind of moving from the ideation and touching also on the language. So <clears throat> now the language is also closely related to the meaning of the song. And so that's why it's important to understand a little bit the language. Now I will give some example here from this song, how <clears throat> the language, the ideation and the melody is all connected beautifully in this song. So for example, <clears throat> when we sing the second stanza of this song, which is Bhari Adiye Cho Vishya Prabhu Tumar Rongi Rupi Raja. 
So you would see that um, the poetry is saying, Bhariye diye chuvishye prabhu tumar rongi rude raje. So three times R. This is, you know, uh, uh, something which is used in poetry. And in, the, in that line, all the end of the line starts with, it ends with rage, ragi, kahani. You know, it's rhyming. So he's using rhyme. And there is also rhyme inside the song. And, you know, the, the way the lyrics are done is very beautiful, how, how the, the poetry is done. Now, <coughs> for the melody, so the meaning of this line is, you fill the creation uh, with colors, poems, and songs. But this translation is actually not completely accurate. So uh, it means you have, uh, you have filled the creation. And then it says Prabhu. Now Prabhu is a very endearing word for the Supreme Consciousness. It's saying the name of the Supreme Consciousness, not in a neutral way, but in a way that you, you love the Supreme Consciousness. It's a name for Supreme Consciousness when you're expressing, you know, uh, uh, it's an endearing name. It's a name uh, which you feel close to you, the Supreme Consciousness. It's like when we say Baba Nam Kevalam. The Baba is a very, it means the dearest and nearest. It not, not only Father, not only Supreme Father, but the dearest and nearest to us, um, Supreme Consciousness. So Prabhu is also a word like that. And so <clears throat> now the melody is, ref is giving em beautiful emphasis on that Prabhu word. So I will sing that line again. <laughs> So, Bhari di Chovishi. This is one meaning. You have filled all the creation. And then, Prabhu Tomarangi Ruteragi. So, Prabhu uh, is like in the center on the sentence. And first comes. Bhari diye chovishe, then Prabhu, and then Tuma Rongi Rupe Rake. So first is saying, you have filled the creation, and then Prabhu means Lord, or Supreme Consciousness, and then with forms and shapes and colors. And, and so the, the architecture of the melody in that sentence is very beautiful. And, um, and it's giving a beautiful emphasis on the word Prabhu. Now, how is that done? It's done with Prabhu. So, this melody is an imp like those um, melisma on the melody. The ornamentation is called melisma. Melisma means when you have one syllable and many uh, uh, melody, many um, tones in that one uh, in that one word. So this, this small melisma that comes there, Prabhu, Prabhu, that's an important part of the melody. <coughs> and then comes, Tumarangi Rupi Ragi, Ragi, that, that is also a beautiful part of the melody. So, um, and then in this song, the three lines are, all have their own melody. So the first line goes like, So they are all slightly different according to the words of that line. 
And um, so okay, this is one example, beautiful example of how the uh, author is uh, combining beautiful imagery, beautiful language, and uh, uh, beautiful melody and beautiful ideation. And of course, all of this is coordinated by the rhythm. So <clears throat> I'll take that example again. This is a four. The song is in four. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, four, 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 one, it's important to catch the rhythm uh, of the melody and how the words match to that rhythm. I'll take another song. This song has also very, very beautiful ideation. Just one second, I'll take some water. So this song, <coughs> um, okay, it's number 181, 181, and it's called To Me Nikoto Hoite Aro Nikotetu. It's in Bengali language, and the rhythm, the uh, the tal or the rhythm uh, is Tatra. So okay, let me just explain a little bit about rhythm because I will I will also use this song to explain rhythmic aspects. So, <clears throat> as you know, in all music, um, there will be certain rhythm in the music. In some of the contemporary modern Western music, they will use poly rhythms or they will use multiple rhythms within one. Um, so within one song or within one uh, tune or, or composition. But normally, uh, one song will follow one rhythm. That's the general. And most of these songs, they are composed in such a way that public should be able to enjoy and sing those songs. And, uh, you know, they should not be too hard um, so that it should be easy to sing and enjoy and use for our to enrich our spiritual practices so uh, this song uh, has a beautiful ideation I will read the meaning come close come still closer come into my mind come in ever new forms resonate in my heart and vibrate my life From the realm of formlessness, 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 you have become form, king of formless. Today all my yearnings have been fulfilled. My quest has come to an end. Today all want you from the depth of the heart. All want you close in whatever is done. Except you, nothing is worth attaining. Now, actually, I, I would prefer to sing the song in C sharp. I forgot to bring my keyboard, and so I'm going to sing it in C. So it's going to be a little bit lower. The original recording is actually in um, D sharp, I think, uh, which is very high for my voice. And C sharp is OK for my voice. So you can match the tune according to your voice but it should be such a way that um, um, that the song is still beautiful I will record this song later on in a short video and in that video I will have it in uh, C sharp 
তুমি নিকট হই আর নিকটে তে এসম মনোমাসি তুমি নিকট হই আর নিকটে তে এসম So this song, now when we practice this song, then um, the ideation here, uh, it's good to, when you're learning the song, just to take one line at a line, one line at a time, and really learn the meaning of the words and the melody correctly and the rhythm correctly until you can really 
sing it so that it's benefiting your meditation. It's kind of useless to just sing a lot of songs and you don't really understand the meaning and you know you don't sing it correctly. It, it doesn't really make so much sense. I mean, you can do it, but um, like for example, this song. So me, so to me, to me. This means you, and it means you in the familiar tense. So in in the Bengali, you can also use apni, but in those songs, it's always using the word to me, because to me it means uh, that the the supreme consciousness is close to you. It's close to your heart. It's like uh, uh, like part of your of your fr it's your close friend. And so uh, so to me nikotohoide aro nikotete. So come close, come still closer. So um, what are we doing when we do meditation? We are trying to go deep and deep inner and inner into our mind. We are trying to discover the Supreme Consciousness hiding inside our mind. So we are going inner and inner. We are going closer and closer towards that Supreme Consciousness. And so when we go closer and closer to that Supreme Consciousness, we are connecting to our inner self and to that Supreme Consciousness. So that's exactly what this song is saying. Come close, still closer, come into my mind. Esho means calm, more. Esho more monomaji. Mon is mind. Come into my mind. So it's inviting the, the spring consciousness inside your mind. Of course it's already there, but it's, it's telling your mind to make that connection. So, <clears throat> so I think that's enough about the bhava. Now, uh, okay, there are some songs also which are more simple. I wanted just to sing one song, uh, which is a really simple song. And it's song number 163, Monke Kono Chudo Kanshi Napti Dobona. So this song is a kind of a, a, a very simple tune, but it has a good meaning. I won't let my mind sing to any bead that's moon. No, 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 I won't let it sing. I will get it seated in the light of meditation. I'll create a new world. Relying on just me, the earth and heaven are anxious with their passion suppressed, their hopes having been fulfilled, I'll make life, life's fountain flow. I'll make the fountain of life flow with new hope. So, after wiping off the tears, I'll draw out a smile. When the crying is removed, the flute will sound, the flute will resound. Up on the earth, good days will come, sorrow, torment, they won't remain. So it's like a very optimistic song that I will be the one that will bring this change to this world. I will make the people smile. I will make them, you know, I will make this light come again on this earth and, and um, all the suffering, I'll, you know, wipe their tears and I will, you know. So it's like <laughs> taking a very positive attitude in life. Like, I will do it. I will be positive. I will make this world move towards positivity. So, uh, and, the, and the melody is very, very simple. It's very easy to learn. And it's just a C major in the song. You can sing it also in D if you have a higher voice or E. Or... Monke kono choto kaji napti dobona. Na 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 napti dobona. Na 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 napti dobona. Deni 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 daloi boshi eto kor 
Now let's go into the next subject, which is the melody, the sure. Now melody is very, very important. You know, that's why I have this harmonium here today. So <clears throat> now many of these songs, many of the Indian songs, I would say all of them actually, are based on the ragas and raginis. So um, according to Tantra, uh, Shiva was the founder of the Ragas, Raginis, and the Shura Saptaka, which is the uh, seven scale, which influenced later on all the different musics in the world. Shiva was born 7,000 years ago. I will give another lecture on Shiva later on, going into depth of his contributions to music. But briefly we can say he invented the seven scale, and he created modulations on that seven scale, which are the ragas and raginis. Now, uh, <clears throat> the different ragas and raginis, they express different moods of the day, your moods and emotions, and, uh, and they are suitable to different types of tunes. So some ragas are more suitable to morning tunes, and some of them are for devotional tunes, which can be sung anytime, and some for evening tunes and midnight tunes, etc. Uh, or, or songs so for example um, all right so now uh, let's take just uh, compare it to western music in the western music you have the scale so you have <laughs> These are the major scales or minor. C minor. These are the normal major minor system. And then later on in the contemporary in the 20th century, they created the 12 tone scale and they created all kinds of chords in the Western music, you know, seventh chord. Sixth chord, uh, all kind of special chord, 
dissonant chords, endless, endless combinations. But in the Indian classical music, it's very much melody based. The Western music is very much harmony based, uh, at least the classical music. And, and then later on, you know, the Baroque music is more melody based. Classical is more uh, harmony based. We are very familiar with harmony based music. All the pop music is harmony based. And um, now, because many of those songs that I'm singing are melody based, so I'm using really simple chords on the guitar. Actually, um, you know, my main instruments was piano and organ. Guitar is something which that was my second instrument. So uh, my guitar knowledge is moderate. It's not really I'm not a professional guitarist in any means, but I'm someone managing. It's good enough for those songs. I would like to play better, of course, as all musicians would like. Um, but many of these songs, because they are melody based, you sh it's, it's not really suitable to overburden them with too much complicated harmonics because they are not harmony based. And, and the Western music is harmony based, so you can make all kind of very complicated harmonic, uh, harmonic, you know, combination. Now, how to be familiar with the ragas? Um, you can use sing on sargam. So uh, <coughs> sargam is seven tones of the animal. So uh, sa re ga ma pa da ni. So sa da ja ri sa da gam ta va. Madhyama, Panchama, Dhaivada, Nishada. So those are the seven animals. And these sounds are in the Vishuddha chakra also. Now, um, <clears throat> let's just use the harmonium to lift it, be familiar with this. So let's just take the C major scale, okay? And we use it for sarkam. So it will be like. Sa -de -ga -ma Let's take another scale, which is a, a, a more of a raga. Sa -ri -ga -ma -ba -da -ni -sa -sa -ni -da -da -ma And if you want to develop your vo vocal skills, uh, you can practice different combinations like sa -ri -ga -ri -ga -ma -ga -ma -ba -ma -ba -da way the musicians they will practice their voice and then you go lower that's that's how far I can go two octaves so that's that's enough for me so <clears throat> uh, so this is the uh, the sargam so sargam is a useful way 
And um, now I'm going to play one song in uh, with a harmonium. Okay, this class will be a little bit longer. Uh, it's it's a quite a big topic, but I'll try to wrap up soon. So <clears throat> this song. Now, I want to a little bit touch on the tal also, because otherwise I don't have any time to discuss that. Um, so the rhythm or the chant, um, like this song, for example, uh, is in the kaharva. So kaharva tal is the most common tal in, in you know, devotional or spiritual songs in India. And um, it's basically, uh, it's for... You know, it's a four beat, or we can say four plus four, it's eight, you know. And so uh, the song is number one, four, one, two, 1412, 1412. And it's called Priyotomo Prabhu Amar. So the rhythm goes like this. Um, so Priyatama Prabhu Amar <clears throat> Priyatama Prabhu Amar I'm, I'm, I'm taking one, it means this is, I could also do it like one, two, three, four. Priyatama Prabhu Amar In the Western contracting way. But simply, uh, you, you take this in one. Priyatama Prabhu Amar Tumari Tari Dibani Shiyagi Chari So it's in the four beat, in the most common beat. Now, uh, the melody is very sweet and the meaning is very nice. So I will, uh, let me say the meaning. Oh my most beloved, I will say the, the song, the lyrics and the meaning. Um, so, Priyatama Prabhu Amar Tumari Tori Dibanishi Aghi Jori Tumi Jagi Yakcho Jori Kon Shuduri More Reki Shori Dagi Jori O my most beloved Lord, for you day and night tears are flowing from my eyes. You went away so far, leaving me on the bank of the river. More Priti Jano Shudu Dumare More Giti Tobo Tripti Dore Amar Shokolman Jodukichu Obhiman Tumare Ghiri Ghiri. My love knows you only. My song is only to please you. All my pride and whatever vanity is revolving around you. Bujiba Chilona Mori Konushaduna Chilona Puno Bol Shubhavana Taikia Mai Feli Shuduri Geli Chori Geliar Elena Fire. So this is the lyrics of the song. Uh, the melody is rather simple. The song is basically in C sharp. This song, uh, but it's a raga, and that uh, raga it, it is identical with the C sharp ma major. And you could also sing it in C or in, in B flat or something like that. <laughs> Dibanishi, 
For me, because I am a, a, a pianist, so it's easy for me to pick up the melody on the, on the harmonium, you know, um, especially when it comes to some nuances, like this song has Dibanishi Akichori Dibanishi Akichori so this and um, now <clears throat> when you learn a song my recommendation is listen to the original recordings they are available on the website pravadasangita.net pravadasangita.net 
I'm sure the support team can spell out the, uh, the website. So in that, that website, you can find the lyrics and you can find the, the, the original recordings. So there you can hear the correct Bengali pronunciation and you can also hear, hear the correct rhythm and the correct uh, melody. Those recordings are verified recordings and uh, uh, they are very helpful. Just one thing I want to say, when you are practicing, if you start practicing the sarga, actually using tambura is the best. So, because that really tunes your ear. So the tambura is a tune, is a, is a, is a drone, and you can simply, um, you know, you can go to YouTube, and uh, they will have plenty of tambura in different pitches according to your voice range. So then let's say we have this, uh, take this as a C is kind of my my good pitch for me so then uh, <coughs> if I wanted to sing that raga that was I was doing before it would be Sa So then you really have to tune your ear to hear, you know, the exact pitch, hear the dissonances, hear the consonant in the in that raga. Now uh, I want to just conclude with two more songs. Um, I'm basically out of time, and uh, to explain a little bit about rhythm, I've already explained sufficiently about the ideation about the melody, about the language. One thing, uh, the composer of those songs, uh, my guru, he did not want those songs to be sung in any other language than the original language. So um, we, no we normally do not sing those songs in translated versions. Like, it would not um, justify the song to sing uh, like instead of Priyadama Prabhu Amara, I would sing, Oh, my most beloved Lord, or something. <laughs> it, forget about it. Because the, the, the language of those songs is so carefully crafted. Every single word is in the right place. There is in rhymes and there is end rhymes and there is different, uh, you know, consonant combinations which are all planned out. It's, it's, the language of those songs is meticulously designed. It's, every song is like a gem. When you start to analyze the, the lyrics, you'll find that there's so beautiful symmetry in them. They are, they are, they are like, you know, when, you, uh, when the flower grows up from the ground. You know, if you would take the, all the algorithms and the, the mathematics of how that flower is coming up and how that leaf is coming out and the you know, the, all these beautiful, um, you know, all these beautiful forms in the nature. The, these poems are like that. They are so natural, they sound so simple, but behind those is all this beautiful symmetry. And so if you try to, you know, do it in your own way, it, you know, it kind of messes it up. And, uh, and so I don't re recommend that. I recommend to go as close to the original recording as possible when it comes to pronunciation, rhythm, and uh, ideation. And now ideation, of course, is personal. <clears throat> so, okay. I'm just going to end with two songs. Um, one song which is quite opera song and it's normally always sung in correct rhythm so this song is song number 12 Noyone Momoda Mora 
It's a beautiful song. The meeting, meaning is, uh, lo, there comes the unknown traveler, the Arjanapati, his eyes revealing limitless compassion, his smile showering radiant pearls. My heart trembles in awe. How overwhelming is his majestic presence. Who is he who produced such overpowering bliss in me? My mind longs to gaze upon him always. Yet in shyness and fear I veer not. Where does such incomparable sweetness lie hidden? So meaning is beautiful. Now this song is actually in Japtal. So Japtal is 5 plus 5. And within the 5 we have um, 2 plus 3. So first I'll just hum the melody and in in and I will say the numbers. So one two one two three 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 in conducting it would be something like um how is it one two one uh one two one two three 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 in the western conducting so <clears throat> i'm not going to do this with the harmonium i'm going to do with the guitar Ashiti Mukuta Chara Noyoni Momota Bora Ashiti Mukuta Chara Ojana Pati Pino Ojana Pati Ashiti Mukota Chara Ajana Pati Pedo Ajana Pati Pedo Iaka Pedro Toro Ikiba Ha 
Sorry. <laughs> okay. Vishodolai, song number 2777. Vishodolai, dol diechu, lilai bhuon nachi. You swayed the entire world by your divine play. The world is dancing. The world is filled with songs in numerous melodies far and near. So, uh, meaning is long. So you can read it later on. Main thing here is you sway the world to and fro. So it's like that swaying, you know, swinging. So beautifully, this song is composed in a rhythm that's called Rubaktal. It's 14 beats or seven plus seven. And so <coughs> the melody goes like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> but it's hard to count it. I'll just I'll just sing it, you'll understand. So it's like uh, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So so it's a little bit of an art to learn to play it in the guitar like that. <coughs> the ori original recording is very high. It's with a female voice. Um, I cannot sing it. I, I just do it in A minor. Um, a minor, the top, top voice, top note will go up to C sharp, which is kind of the top of... I can go up to E, but C sharp is high for me, so... Oh, 
Yeshu Tomar Milami Noi Noi Hobi Hoi Hai Hobi Noi We should Tomar Milami Noi Noi Hobi Hai Hobi Noi Rita Ikata Rita the questions so um, I need to be able to read so <laughs> one second I'm just gonna bring my computer closer <coughs> okay let me roll back here into beginning okay namaskar many people are saying namaskar Okay, how long did it take you to become fluent in writing, reading, and speaking the Bengali language? Well, I did not have a lot of time to study. I was kind of doing it. I was working in the bakery in, and um, bakery in Denmark and Sweden, and uh, um, it happened in seven years, we can say, with kind of very. Uh, infrequent study time my study time was kind of sometimes while driving the bakery car sometimes while doing something else um, and sometimes i would have someone to help me a little bit and um, uh, and then <coughs> what i did was that i wrote 300 song in the bengali script so that helped me a lot so i um, i wrote 300 songs and learned 300 songs and uh, so then, you know, I was singing the songs from my handwriting and, and then I, I became fluent. But I, unfortunately, I never got a chance to spend a lot of time in Bengal. So I didn't really learn to speak. I would really like to speak, learn to speak, but I, I have not mastered the, uh, the spoken language. Although I can read. I have read one complete book in Bengali, you know. Um, I, I did a thesis in Taiwan. So one of my references was a whole whole book in Bengali so I had to go through it so I read the whole book it took me one month but uh, uh, yeah okay songs in Sanskrit um, <clears throat> yeah we have about uh, in this song cycle uh, we have about 10 songs in uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, about 10 songs so when I'll, gi I'll give another talk which will be about Shiva and his contribution to music and so many of the songs because she the Sanskrit language was, um, you know, natural language there in Shiva's time. So many of the Shiva songs are in the Sanskrit language. And um, so I will sing some of those. Some of them are very, very beautiful. I, I will sing. And I will also record some of those in the shorter clips, which have a high, higher resolution than the streaming. They are in 4K. Okay. Okay. Um, any online traditional options to learn the language? So um, uh, when I started learning, there was only one language course, which was Teach, your, teach Yourself Bengali. And um, it was kind of a very elementary and um, I went through it. And then uh, uh, recently, uh, about five, six years ago, it came out a really nice Sanskrit, uh, this Bengali grammar book. 
by I think her name is Thompson, um, published by uh, Rutledge. Uh, very brilliant grammar book on Bengal, uh, on the Bengali language. The, the cover is a green cover. It's it's quite a thick book, and so that's a very very good introduction to the grammar of Bengali. And then of course there may be some online Bengali courses now. I I haven't had time to go through it. Okay. Um, okay, what would be the number one reason for Dadaji to want to build a better world? Okay. <laughs> so, um, why should we build a better world? You see, this world today is very much focused on mental things and physical things. You see, in the basic plexus, we have the physical longings, which is karma. And then we have the psychophysical longings, which are the artha. And the psycho-spiritual longings, which are the dharma. And the pure spiritual longing, which is the moksha. So, <clears throat> most of the things in the world today, they are either physical or psychophysical, either kama or artha. So the problem with psychophysical is that it's bringing your mind towards matter. So for example, all advertisement is psychophysical. Um, you will see it, for example, in, uh, in medications. Many medications, they only look at the body and they don't look at the mind. They don't see how the mind is influenced by the food or by the medication. For example, in the last 20, 30 years, there have been so many theories about what is the best diet for human beings. And so there's Atkinson diet, there is this... Um, <coughs> all kind of diets so but all of these diets they are ignoring the mental effect of the mind and the psycho spiritual effect on the mind so they are ignoring how the food is influencing our mind but in the yoga we know that we have physical mental and spiritual so now what needs to happen is that the world needs to start to move in the dharma category. We are now in the kama and artha, in the first two of those, the physical longing and the psychophysical longings. But dharma is not very well established. So dharma is the movement from your mind towards your soul. It's movement towards inner peace and towards compassion, towards love, and towards feeling compassion with each and every individual, each and every being in this world. So that's what we need in this world. We need love. We need a world based on love, compassion, and sharing. Our economic system right now is based on greed trying to gain as much as you can completely ignoring the other people around you so of course you know we have some moderation on that there is some social science and you know we are sharing the government is caring for us and all that and there's so many social benefits and there are so many but really speaking we have not come as a humanity to the collective consensus that we are all brothers and sisters and that we all need to love and care for each other. That realization needs to dawn upon humanity. And when that happens, a lot of things will be transformed. Our economic system will be transformed, our social system, the way we grow agriculture, everything will be transformed. So um, 
My vision for a new world is a world which is based on love and compassion, where we can all live harmoniously together and share the resources and share the potential of this universe. And we can care not only for human beings, but also for the animals and plants and nature in general. So that's why I say there is a need for a new world. There's a need for us to take the role of bringing humanity towards that new world. And the way we do that starts with ourselves. By doing meditation, by expanding your love. You have to expand your love. So you start with yourself. You love yourself then you love your family, you love the people around you, your friends. And then you start to make that circle bigger. Love the people in your community, care for your community, take some community action, try to, you know, work with the community around you. And then care for your country, care for the whole globe, care for your child, if you have a child, then care for all the children in the universe. So in this way, we try to expand our love. <clears throat> and, uh, and that happens when we take the ideation of something infinite. And that's why in the meditation, we have to take the ideation of the infinite loving consciousness, because then our mind become infinite. Okay, I'll see if there's any more questions. Okay, today is not so many questions, it seems. So, um, uh, well, that's maybe also good because I uh, have gone quite a lot over time. And so um, I think uh, we can conclude this talk now. And so thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a very, very deep topic. Um, I will be releasing some small video clips with uh, individual songs recorded in uh, 4K and with good audio. And there I will focus on one song at a time and uh, first sing the song, then read out the meaning in uh, Bengali and in English or in whatever language the song is, and then uh, explain a little bit the inner meaning of that song and how it relates to our meditation practices. And so I hope that those smaller clips, uh, you know, it will be like five, uh, not five, like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Those smaller videos will soon be coming out. Okay, thank you so much. I'll just conclude the class with a short kirtan. <coughs> Baba Namo Kiva Namo Baba Namo Kiva Namo Baba Namo Kiva Namo Baba Namo Kiva Baba Namo Kiva Namo Baba Baba Namo Kivana Baba